Thank you. I do have um, just some brief things that God has given me to speak this evening. Uh, this has been a message, amen, that God has been dissecting in me. Um, and some of you all may be familiar, but as a preacher, God will sometimes cut you first, amen, before he will allow you to give the word to someone else. The word of God talks about that the word is a double-edged sword, amen. It divides between the joints and the marrow, amen, and it also reveals the attitudes of your heart. So this is a message that I believe that's going to be a blessing to the body of Christ. I believe that it's going to take us even higher to another level that God wants us to be in, amen? And before we go there, I just wanna pray right quick. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, dear Lord, to speak to your people. I pray, God, that you prick every heart, Lord. We are alert to hear, God, what it is that you have given us to hear tonight. I pray, dear Lord, that I decrease, God, so that you can increase, Lord. Build us up, God, for your glory. God, it's all about you. In your precious son's name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. What I want to talk about just very briefly is the importance of having God's perspective. It's so important for you to have the perspective of God concerning your life and your life situations. I'm going to give you a charge this evening. It's my prayer that when you leave tonight, you will begin to pray and ask God for his perspective concerning your life and the situations that you are in. It's so important, especially for those of us who are facing crises who are facing obstacles, who are facing situations where it feels our back is up against the wall, we need to have the perspective of God, amen? Because the thing is, is that we don't have the perspective of God, then we're able to not finish the journey, we're not able to make our destiny, and more than likely, you're able to give up, right? The Lord began to speak to me even last night about losing perspective. The man of God prophesied to me, and to be candid, y'all, because I'm a transparent preacher, the man of God began to prophesy about all these great things that God wanted to do in my life. And even as I stood up here to hear what he had to say, it was the kind of stuff, y'all, it was good news, Sheree. I was like, it was the kind of stuff that makes you want to run and scream and, you know, be excited. But the thing is, is that I've been so bogged down with the natural that I couldn't see how it could actually become possible. I had lost my perspective. Tonight, the men and women of God, they're gonna speak into your life. And that's why it's so important that you are able to have God's perspective. So we talk about perspective. What is perspective? Perspective is how you look at things, how things are shaped to you. When we talk about God's perspective, we're talking about his point of view. He has the bigger picture, right? He has the large perspective. That's the type of perspective that we need as the people of God. So we're here tonight for a prophetic conference. The thing about conferences is that this is a time to get built up and equipped, right, in the army of God. I believe that in this season, God wants to mature his people. And the thing about maturity is, is that we got to make sure that our vision is in alignment with his. Amen. So that means that we're going to have to be quick, y'all. That we're going to have to be able to see the things that he sees, right? And not get caught up in the natural. There's a great example of a man of God who is able to see God's perspective. And so my text comes from 2 Kings chapter 6. Verse 15 through 17, you don't have to turn there if you don't want to. Um, but in the text, we see two kings and they're basically beefing y'all. It's the king of Syria and the king of Israel. And what happens is every time the king of Syria wants to attack the king of Israel, God reveals the plan, Reggie, to Elisha the prophet. Elisha is so bad, I mean bad in a good way, that he tells the king of Israel what the king of Syria wants to do. This goes on and on and on again 
to the point of the king of Syria, he's so upset. He's like, man, there must be a leak in our camp. The king of Syria's servant tells him, it's not any leak, it's the man of God who hears your plans. He even hears the plans that you talk about in your bedroom. So what happens is the king of Syria says, we gotta get that guy, Elisha. So they surround the city where Elisha lives. Elisha's servant wakes up the next morning and when he looks out, he sees the entire city, Tiffany, and it's surrounded by horses and chariots. So Elisha's servant begins to freak out because he understands that these horses and chariots are there to kill them, right? It's the enemy who's completely surrounded them. But the thing about Elisha, the man of God, is the man of God encourages the servant and he says, fear not, there are more with us than against us. He then begins to pray, and he says, Lord, touch the servant's eyes so he can see. And God answers that prayer. The thing about the text is, the servant's eyes open. He's able to still see that the enemy is still there, but he's also able to see a band of angels that have surrounded the enemy, and it's more of them than it is against him. And so that's the thing about having God's perspective. God wants you to understand tonight that when you have his perspective, there's no enemy in hell that can stop you, amen? That when you have God's perspective, you understand that no matter what obstacles you are dealing with, the Lord is with you. Somebody say, I need God's perspective. One of the things about having God's perspective that you come to understand is that when you don't have it, you fall into a trap of hopelessness and despair. Anybody ever just been bogged down in the natural? You start looking at, man, I don't have any money. I ain't got a boo. You know, you just start looking at the natural and that feeling of hopelessness and despair kicks in. One of the things about when we don't have the perspective of God and why it is so important, especially in this season as people of God, that we get his perspective is because when we don't, we begin to operate in our flesh, right? We begin to look at the natural and begin to do things out of our flesh. I'll give you an example. I've been dealing, my storm has been dealing with unemployment. I've been unemployed for a couple of months now. So Kalina, in the beginning, when I dealt with unemployment, this was a great time for me to spend with the Lord. He downloaded a lot of things with me from ministry. It was cool. I made some adjustments financially. I said, okay, well, I won't get my nails done as much. I'll look on YouTube and figure out how to do some things to my hair. But over time, Kalina, you know, it started to grate in my spirit and on my nerves, right? It's tough, y'all, not having money. And so one of the things is, is that I said, you know what, God? We spend a lot of time together. I'm going to get me a job. I'm going to apply for a job. I'm ready to work. God, we didn't spend a lot of time together, but I'm ready to make some money. So I apply for a job. They contact me, y'all, immediately, right? I go in for an interview. The CEO, she loves me. She allows me to meet with somebody else. They love me too. This week, I'm expecting to get a call back to say that I'm hired. This man of God prophesied to me last night. Immediately, he says, it's not in God's will for you to get a career. You're supposed to be in ministry. Had it not been for him, right, I would have missed my destiny because I was operating in the flesh. And see, Prophetess Amethyst, she talked about last night Kairos time. The man of God also talked about that this is a season of open heavens. That's why it's so important that we don't get bogged down on what's going on in the natural and we're able to see in God's perspective from his viewpoint because I, had I took the job, it would have been Kairos time. It would have been my blessing over here, but I would have been over here looking stupid missing the blessing that God had for me because I wanted to operate in the flesh. Another thing is, is that when we decide not to see in God's perspective, we miss out on our destiny. 
It's part of your destiny to go through the process. Even the storms, right? It's part of the thing that God has for us. So very quickly before I take my seat, there are three things that you need to do to be able to see life from God's perspective. These are three things that God has downloaded to me to share with you. Three things that you need to do to be able to see from God's viewpoint concerning your life. If you're going through an obstacle, if you feel like your back is up against the wall, you need to make sure that you write down these three points. The first thing that God wants you to do to make sure you have his perspective is to pray and ask for his perspective. We look at the text, Elisha prayed for his servant. Prayer is your communication with the Lord. The word talks about if you ask, you seek, and you knock, you'll get it. The thing is, is that God wants us, especially in this season as prophetic people, to have the insight, to have the revelation and the knowledge in this season. Ask for his perspective concerning your situation. God, why am I unemployed? Why am I single in this season? What is it that you want me to do? Why can't it seem that I can get along with people? God, why is it? What is your perspective? These are questions that you can ask God. The thing about God's perspective is he reveals it to the spiritually mature. Amen. And this is a season for us to get matured and built up in him. So the first thing is we want to pray and ask for his perspective. The second thing we want to do is make the commitment that you are going to endure the process. Amen. When you look at Elisha, Elisha was a G, right? When he saw that the whole city was surrounded, they were coming to take him out, he stood flat-footed and he said, fear not. There are more with us than against us. God wants to raise up some G's, okay? He wants to raise up some warriors in the kingdom. And the thing about being a warrior is that you're gonna have to go through the process. The thing is, is that your storm, the obstacles that you are experiencing, that is shaping you to be a G in the kingdom, amen? That's part of your process to align, yours, uh, to align your vision so you can see in the supernatural. Had I not been experiencing this unemployment, there's no need for me to be able to see in the supernatural. Amen? If I'm employed, I can just see in the natural where my money is going to come from. But it's our situations, our experiences, our obstacles, our crises. That's what's taking us to another level so we can see in the supernatural. The third point, my final point, is that you're going to need to tap into your faith. Very rarely will God give you his perspective and not have some form of action for you to take. Amen. In the text, we see that Elisha and his servant, they see that they're surrounded by the enemy. There's a band of angels there. But even then, Elisha prays again to God and asks God to blind the army, with, to, to basically blind the army so they don't recognize him. The thing about God is that when he shows us something, prophetess, he doesn't just say, that's it. I just showed you that. I revealed that to you. You don't have to do anything else. Normally, there's a course of action that we have to take. I'll give you an example. I host a Christian talk show every Wednesday on 690 AM called Inspired Overflow. I've been hosting that talk show for about three years. Every month, I'm required to pay for my airtime. This month, I didn't have the money. So the thing is, even with Christian radio, you can't, I can't go up to them and start speaking in tongues, right? No, 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 no. They don't care. They're like, where is my money? And so I didn't have the money. But I had guests that were scheduled to be there. These are guests. You know, they didn't tell their friends they're going to be on the radio. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Maybe. I'll just cancel. I, I won't do the show. And the Lord said, move forward. And so I sent a text message to the station manager. I'm like, look, maybe I'll have the money by Friday. You know, I'm just trying to buy some time. I sent her a text message. I sent her an email. I didn't hear from her pastor. And the Lord said, go forward. So I said, okay. I took a step back. 
And I remembered all the things that God had said to me about this radio ministry. And I was able to see the band of angels with me. I said, okay, God is with me. I'm gonna take this step of faith and go to the station. So I went to the station and I found out there was a new chicken wing restaurant in the neighborhood. And they had delivered over a hundred different assorted chicken wings to the station. And so the station, they were having a staff party eating the chicken wings. When I got there, the station manager said, hey Casey, how are you? I'm in here eating some chicken. Go ahead and go for it with your radio show. We'll just talk later. And so the Lord blinded the staff with chicken, amen? That's how I looked at it. And for some of you all, that might not mean much to you. But what it meant to me was God reminded me that he's with me every step of the way, but there's still some faith required out of me. I still got to walk in faith, even in the natural when it doesn't make sense, right? So those are some things about making sure that you get God's perspective. In conclusion, the Lord wants you to remember more than anything that he is always with you, especially as people of God. Amen. He's always with you. There are more for you than there are against you. Pray tonight. Pray every day that you will have God's perspective concerning your situations, things that trouble you. God, give me your perspective. Give me your insight. Why am I going through this? Show me, Lord, and make a commitment to endure the process. Amen. The process is for your good. Pray for bold faith, big faith. Amen. Because you're going to need that faith to be able to operate in the supernatural. Amen. You're going to be seeing some things that everybody else does not see. But you need to be able to move in that faith, amen? So those are the three steps. And before I take my seat, I just want to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you, God. Lord, I decree and I declare over your people, God, that we will have your perspective, God. I thank you, Lord, for the increased revelation, dear God, that you are dropping over your people tonight, God. I thank you, Lord, for your fresh insight, for your fresh revelation, God, that we will use for your glory, God. I thank you, dear Lord, that our eyes are sensitive to you, our ears are sensitive to you, God. We're operating in the supernatural, God. This is the level that you want your people to operate in, God. I give you glory, God, for your people, God. I thank you, Lord, for the things that we will see that we have never saw before. In your precious son's name we pray, amen.